Welcome to the evening service of the Brown Street Church of Christ. Tonight is a very special night. Our young men, particularly, our young ladies have done this last Wednesday night, and our young men are doing this tonight in the auditorium, and they'll be leading us in our worship here in the auditorium tonight. So this is Boys Leadership Training for Christ, and it will be a seamless worship service. Uh, you can see our next young man is already up here at the front. He's ready to go. Brendan Jones is going to be leading us in a leading a hymn for us in just a few moments and then right after that each young man will come forward and present what he is going to do at LTC and we want to welcome everyone tonight for this service thank you for coming uh, our plan is that this will take one hour and so that is our goal and that is a goal okay and if we get through early that'll be just a little icing on the cake but thank you for being here tonight let's prepare ourselves to worship God and Brendan if you'll come and lead us please hello my name is Brendan Jones from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie Texas today I will be leading number 452 standing on the promises verses 1 and 4 once again, that's 452, standing on the promises, verses 1 and 4.
Good evening. My name is Evan Metford. I'm a member of the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxach, Texas. Professional football player Odell Beckham Jr. is quoted as saying, Football is my sanctuary. It's where I go to escape. It's where I'm most happy. Now, I personally enjoy sports, and I believe that they're a great way to use the health, talents, and blessings that have been given to many by God to glorify Him. If they are performed to glorify Him, and if God is the center and main purpose for why we play. Now, the issue, however, with things such as sports is that they can be a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I mean, half the people that play a game of football lose. So to center and base your life around something such as football is going to leave you disoriented, both mentally and spiritually. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28, once again, that is Proverbs 11:28 states, Whoever trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. You see, to trust and rely upon your riches, possessions, and the things of this world will only lead to you falling because they're not a firm foundation. But Christ, however, is a firm foundation. In fact, Christ is the very cornerstone of the household of God, which is an everlasting sanctuary itself. This is explained by Paul in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 19 and 20, where he says, So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. So Jesus is a sure foundation while the things of this world are not. And there's actually very evidence of this in the quote I read earlier, except I didn't exactly read the entire thing the first time. So here it is. Odell Beckham Jr. is quoted as saying, football is my sanctuary. It's where I go to escape. It's where I'm most happy. I'm not having fun anymore. And you see that right there is the problem. I want to encourage you right now not to base your life on worldly things, but to let God be your sanctuary. Let the Lord be your shepherd because he's always there and he will never fail. And you can rest in that. Find peace in that. Verse 8 of the 34th Psalm says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Jesus came to this painful earth to have a relationship. The root word of relationship is relate. The almighty God of the universe can relate to us. That's huge, church. That means he gets us. He understands our pain. He loves us and he cares for us. And we can rest in that. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In Psalms chapter 55, verse 22 says, Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Rest in that. Rest in God. Rest in the sanctuary that he is. Now, I ask you would please turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. And I'll be starting in verse 43. Once again, that is Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Jesus states, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. And soon before that, Jesus states how we are the light of the world in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. By these verses, we can conclude that we are to reflect who Christ is into this world now that he is no longer physically here. As Christians, we're called to love others. We're called to encourage others. And we're called to care for others. We're called to be a sanctuary for others. In Galatians chapter 6, we're told to bear one another's burdens. In 1 John chapter 4, we are once again called to love one another. And there are so many other verses that explain how we are to be a sanctuary for not only each other, but for the people of this world as well. The church should be a place of love, but it's hard to do that when we're always arguing with one another or we're mad at each other or constantly looking down on one another but that's a lesson for another time. You see, God chose for us to be his mouthpiece, and God is love, so we are the mouthpiece of love. That's a big job, and we need to take it seriously. Now, it can be hard to live that way, the way we're called to live, to love our enemies, to bear one another's burdens, that's hard. I mean, life is already hard by itself, but then Jesus calls us to be perfect. How do we do this? Turn with me, please, to Hebrews chapter 12, verses one and two. 
Once again, that's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. We walk this way, we run this race by looking to the man who is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Look to heaven, look to Jesus. That is the goal, that is the mission. That is where our hope is found, in the eternal sanctuary with our Lord. So, I want you to remember that as you face struggles and you fight battles, God's got you. He's a sanctuary for you. And we need to remember that we are called to be a sanctuary of love for others. And we do this by looking to the prize the eternal sanctuary with Christ Jesus. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ransom Ward. I'm from the Brown Street Church of Christ, Waxahachie, Texas. Tonight, I'll be reading Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22 through 28. Again, that is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22 through 28. And this is about redemption through the blood of Christ. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Thus it was necessary for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these rites, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has entered, not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Thank you. Hello, I'm Landon Farmer, and I'm from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas. Today, I will be reading James chapter 5, verses, thir verses 13 through 19. I repeat, that is James chapter 5, verses 13 through 19, in the English Standard Version. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them, call, let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil of the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you might be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power in his working. Elijah was a man of a nature like ours. He prayed fervently that he might, it might not rain for three years and six months, and it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you brings, back, brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. I thank you. Hello, my name is Jonah Glover. And I'm from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas. Today, I will be leading It Is With My Soul, page 490, verses 1 and 3. Again, that is It Is With My Soul, Page 490, verses 1 and 3. <laughs>
my name is Drake Scott from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas. As most of you know, I'm a little bit different, just like everybody else. We all have to find sanctuary in the Lord for us to overcome stuff that's hard for us to do. I'm on the autistic spectrum. Talking with new people is difficult for me. Each time I'm scared or worried. I take comfort knowing the Lord is with me. I have a scripture. I really like it. I bet you might like it too. It's Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He was, he. He leads me in the pa- leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for You are with me. Your rod and staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil; my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This makes me feel safe, knowing God is with me, even though, even when I don't think He is there, He is there. Always, that He is my sanctuary. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. Means that He takes care of everything that I need. We can take comfort knowing everything that we need in this world. God will provide. Psalms twenty three made me think of the song I lead in song leading. This year is as the deer. Psalms forty two, verses one through two says, "As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, the, for the living God. When shall I come and appear for you, God?" I know deer like to drink from water that is calm. They and they need water to survive, just like me. I like to swim in calm water or drink from still water. After a good drink, a deer will lie down and rest. They may do this in green pastures or somewhere they feel safe. Now this world is not always a nice place or a safe place. This world is more like school, where people are mean and say hurtful things. This makes me think of the valley of the shadow of death. But since God is with me, I'll fear no one, no evil. I know God keeps me safe. He's the most powerful. And if my soul longs after Him, He will protect me. This is a comfort to me, knowing this. Knowing this makes me feel safe. My cup or my Heart is full of knowing that all the days of my life, God is my protector. And my sanctuary, because I can dwell or stay in His house forever. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ryan Fletcher from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas, and tonight I will be reading Hebrews 13, 5 through 16. 
Keep your life free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear, what can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God, consider the outcome of the way of life, and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods which have not been benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat, for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy place by the high priest is a sacrifice for sin or burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the camp the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go out to him outside the camp, bear the reproach he endured, for here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then let us confident, con- continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that acknowledges his name. Do not neglect to do good and share what you have for such sacrifice. Sacrifices are pleasing to God. Hi, my name is Blake Medford from the Brown Street Church of Christ, Waxhatchee, Texas. Tonight, I will be reading James 5, 12 through 20. Again, that is James 5, 12 through 20. About all my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will you will be condemned. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to to each other of and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being even as we are, even as we are, he prayed er, earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land of three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the, and the heavens gave rain and earth and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wonder from the truth and someone someone should bring that person back, remember this, however, turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Thank you. Hello.
Hello, my name is Aiden Bowser from the Brown Tree Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas. Today, I will be singing The Battle Belongs to the Lord, page 749. Again, that's The Battle Belongs to the Lord, page 749. I'll be singing verse 1 and 3. Hello, my name is Connor Medford, and I'm from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas. Tonight, I'll be reading Psalms 46. Again, that is Psalms 46 in the English Standard Version. And this passage is about God is our fortress. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear through the earth gives way, through the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, through its waters roar and foam, through the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold, the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war seas to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted among the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. With, with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Thank you. Hi. My, na my name is Aiden Waller from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxedge, Texas. Tonight, I'll be reading Psalm 63, verse 1 through 11. Again, that's Psalm 63, verse 1 through 11, out of the New American Standard. O, Lord, o, Lord, o God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you. In, the, in a dry and weary land where there is no water, thirst I have seen you in the sanctuary. To see you, your power, your glory, and your glory, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands your, in your name. My soul is satisfied, as with marrow and fatness. My mouth and my mouth will, uh, offers praise with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in on you in the night watches. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of you of your wings, I sing for joy. My soul clings to you; your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it, will go into the depths of the earth. They will be delivered over to the power of the sword. They will 
be a prey for foxes, but the king will rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him will glory. For the mouths who, of those who speak lies will be stopped. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ryan Stewart, and I'm a member at the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas. Today, I'd like to start off asking you a question. Do you have a place in your life that you feel safe in? It's going to have a safe place to feel comfortable and at ease. It's, it's, it's also important to remember, to remember to have a safe place where we can relax and rest. For some people, it may be their home, while for others, it may be a park or a quiet spot in nature. Whatever it may be, having a safe place can help us deal with the stresses of life. It's also important to remember that safety is emotional, physical, and spiritual. Having a supportive community can contribute to our sense of safety and well-being. To, to give an example of a safe place, one example of a sanctuary, let's turn in the Bible and look at Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. Again, that is Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went up in, a, in his upper room with his windows knelt toward Jerusalem. He knelt on his knees three times that day and prayed. And then guards came near and said, O king, did you not sign the pretension that anyone who makes, who, who, anyone who, who makes pretension to any god or man within 30 days except to you, O king, shall be, not, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing stands fast according to the law of Medes and Persians. The guards that took away Daniel is like sin invading our lives. If we fall, we should always get back up and stay on the heavenly road. Even though Daniel was thrown to the lion's den, he never even considered sinning against God. God was with him, and we can and should always come to him if we walk away from him. Now let's turn to Daniel chapter 3, verse 18. Again, that is Daniel chapter 3, verse 18. Here we see that even to the point of death, Daniel found sanctuary in God. He said, But if it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. So even if they tortured Daniel to the point of death, he would not have bound down to the golden image or gods that they have set up. When we look through the Bible, we see many examples of people who found their sanctuary in God. But how can we, oh, we, we can see Paul, Peter, David, and many others. But how can we find our sanctuary in God? One of the ways we can find sanctuary in God is through prayer. When we pray, we are talking to God and inviting him into our lives. We are asking him to be our refuge, our safe place, our sanctuary. In Psalms chapter 91, verse 2, it states, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. When we declare that God is our refuge, we are acknowledging that he is our sanctuary. Another way that we can find sanctuary in God is through reading the Bible. When we read the Bible, we learn about God's character, his promises, and his love for us. In John chapter 8, verses 31 to 32, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are my disciples. Then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. When we hold to Jesus' teachings, we find sanctuary in him. Do you have sanctuary in Jesus? What does that mean to you? To me, sanctuary means you are safe in Jesus. To be safe in Jesus means you have repented, you have confessed, and you have confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. And now you are ready to be baptized into Christ. Having sanctuary in Jesus means that we have a refuge from the, from the troubles of this world. It means that we have a place where we can find, com find peace and comfort in times of distress. When we have sanctuary in Jesus, we have a sense of security that can only come from the, from the relationship with him. So do you have sanctuary in Jesus? If not, I encourage you to seek him and ask him to be your sanctuary. He's waiting for you with open arms. Thank you. Hello, my name is Cameron Medford, from, and I'm from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas. And tonight I will be singing I Stand in Awe, page 96. Again, that is I Stand in Awe, page 96, and I'll be singing through it twice. You 
Hudson Waller, and tonight I'll be reading from Psalm 118, verses 1 through 19. Again, that is Psalm 118, verses 1 through 19. I'll give thanks to the Lord, for it is good, because his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say, his mercy endures forever. I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. It is, best, it, is be, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All the nations surround me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surround me. Yes, they surround me. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surround me like bees. They are quenched like a fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. You push me violently that I might fall. But the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord is has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of the righteous, of the righteousness. I will go through them, and I will praise the Lord. Thank you. Hi, my name is Roy Holder, and I'm from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas. Today, I'll be reading Psalms 27, verses 1, and ten, 1 through 10, in the England Standard Version. Again, that is Psalms 27, verses 1 through 10 in the England Standard Version. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me and eat, to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is who they who do stumble and fall. Though an army and a cape against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to acquire in his temple. For he will hide in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under his, the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon his rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing to the melody of, to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me now. Turn not your servant away in anger. O oh, you have been my help. Cast me not, forsake me not. O oh, God, my salvation. For me, the father and my mother, for forsaken me. But the Lord will make me in. Thank you. Hi, I'm Landon Farmer, and I'm from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas. And I'm here to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Does anyone here have a pet at home? I have a dog named Jax. I love my dog. He is a great pet, and he feels safe with me. There was a time in the Bible when the, when the animals of our planet did not feel safe. I would like you to turn to Genesis 6, verses 7, verses 7 verse 17 and read with me for behold i will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life under heaven everything that is on the earth shall die in this verse god makes it known that he will destroy all living things. If we read on, we learn that Noah's family and the animals that he takes with him will survive. If you will, if you will read Genesis chapter seven, verses one through three. Then the Lord said to Noah, go into, go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of clean animals, the male and his mate, and pairs of animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, Several, and seven pairs of birds of the heavens also, male and, and, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. In this scripture, we read that Noah took seven pairs of clean animals and one pair of unclean animals. These were the animals that had found safety on the ark. But what happened to the other animals that were on the ark? The answer of that question is found a few verses later. If, if you would, please turn with me to verses 21 through 23 of that same chapter in Genesis. All the flesh that died moved on all the flesh died moved, that moved on the earth, birds, livestock, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all mankind. Everything on the dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life had died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, man and animal and creeping things and birds of the heavens. They were bottled out from the earth, blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those who were with him on the ark. In these verses, we see that God killed all living things on the earth that were not on the ark. But why would God kill all these people? 
Well, the Bible answers that question in Genesis chapter 6. Please turn with me and follow as I read verses 11 through 13 in, chapter, in Genesis chapter 6. Now the earth was corrupted in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence, and God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupted. For all flesh that had corrupted their way onto the earth, and God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh for the earth was filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Turn with me to, oh, hang on. Behold, I will destroy them. It means God, oh, what does this mean? It means God despises sin. Turn with me to Proverbs 6, 6 chap, uh, chapter 6, verses, verses, 16 through 19, and read with me. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feats that make haste to run to evil, a false witness to brothers who leaves who breathes out lies and one who shows discord among brothers these types of sin were prevalent in the days of Noah and the Lord had decided to rid the earth of these evils in the ark God provided sanctuary to all the animals with the, with the breath of life in them and man and women under its roof provide he blah. All the men and women under its roof. He provides sanctuary for us today as long as we walk in his path and love like he has taught us to love. I thank you. Hello, my name is Bradley Medford from the Brown Street Church of Christ, Waxhatchee, Texas. Tonight, I'll be singing Faithful Love page 18, both verses. Again, that's Faithful Love, page 18, both verses. Faithful Love
Hello, my name is Tilden Glover. I'm from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxaxi, Texas. Today, I will be reading Matthew 28, 11 through 20 out of the English Standard Version. Once again, that is Matthew 28, 11 through 20 out of the ESV. This passage is about the report of the guard and the Great Commission. While they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests what had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ear, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they are directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go the, of this, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Casey Riddle from the Brown Street Church of Christ. Tonight I'll be reading Psalms 115 verses 1 through 18. Again, this is Psalms 115 verses 1 through 18, English Standard Version. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Why should the nation say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. The idols are silver and gold, the works of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak. Eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear. They have noses, but do not smell. They have hands, but do not feel. Feet, but do not walk. And they, and they do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them become like them. So do all who trust in them. O Israel, trust in the Lord, he is our help in their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord, he is our help in their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord, he is our help in their shield. The Lord has remembered us, he will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel, he will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless... Those who fear the Lord, both the small and the great. May the Lord give you increase, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of man. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any who go down to silence. But we bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore praise the Lord. Thank you. Hi, oh, my name is Rod Holder, and I'm from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxahachie, Texas. Today I'll be leading to Canaan's Land. I'm on my way, page 867. Again, that is to Canaan's Land. I'm on my way, page 867. To Canaan's Land. No. Uh -huh. 
is Chad O'Neill from the Brown Street Church of Christ, and I am from Waxahachie, Texas. Tonight, I will be reading 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 23. Again, that is 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 23. According to the grace of God, which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I lay a foundation, and another building is laid on it. But each man must be careful for how he builds on it. For no man can lay a foundation other than the one that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident. For the day will show it because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which is laid has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. If any man's work which is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him, and for the temple of God is holy. That is what you are. Let no man deceive himself, for if any man among you thinks that he is wise in this age, he must become foolish, so that he may become wise. For the wisdom of the world is foolishness before God. For it is written, He is the one who catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the reason... The Lord knows the reasonings of the wise, and that they are useless. So then, let no one boast in men, for things belong to you, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All things belong to you, and you are Christ, and Christ belongs to God. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Grant Hobbs, and I'm from the Brown Street Church of Christ in Waxachie, Texas. I want you to close your eyes and imagine with me for a minute. Imagine that you've been traveling for months on end across the ocean, but after these long, gruesome months, you finally see land, a place where you can finally be free from the dangers of the ocean, a sanctuary, perhaps. An example of these people that did this are the pilgrims. These pilgrims landed in the Americas on December 2nd of, 20, of 1620, intending to escape the Church of England and gain religious freedom. A similar people we know are the early Christians during the time of the Roman Empire. As we know, Rome impressed these early Christians. They did this through a variety of methods, such as imprisonment, stoning, crucifying, and even what Emperor Nero did, burning them to light a party. They were able to execute these methods through various hired men to seek out and oppress the Christians. An example of these hired men is Saul of Tarsus. If you will please turn with me to Acts 7.54 and Acts 8 verse 1. It says, Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into the heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep, and Saul approved of his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except for the apostles. This was just the start of Saul's persecution of the Christians. While for this instance he stood by and watched, he soon began to persecute them himself via killing and imprisoning them. But this all changed that the day Saul went to Damascus, he became blinded by God and sent into the fold of Ananias, where he started the journey to become Paul, the apostle of Christ. But what does this story have to do with sanctuary? Well, while Saul was with Ananias, he was given food, water, and shelter. He was provided a physical sanctuary as he learned God's word. And even after that, he was still in sanctuary through God. Although Paul went through many trials in his time, we know, that Paul, we know from Paul's letters that he went through these trials knowing his soul was safe as God, through, with God. He went through imprisonment, stranding, abuse, and oppression, but throughout all of these events, he never dared to turn his back on God. 
Another person we find that had sanctuary in God was David. This is seen in Psalms 118, verses 5 through 6, which says, Out of my distresses I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? David, the king of Israel, put all of his trust into the Lord. He trusted that God would come to his side if he ever needed it. We see this in the story of David and Goliath. David trusted in himself and God to bring him through the battle that he was about to be put into, as, he, as shown in 1 Samuel 17, 37, where it says, And David said, The Lord who had delivered me from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. David had put all of his trust into God, and he ended up winning that battle, killing Goliath with his very own sword. Another instance of David trusting God is when he wrote the entirety of Psalms 118. But in verses 13 and 14, it says, I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. We're clearly shown that David had immense faith in God and trusted him fully to be a sanctuary. So we have these two examples of great men trusting God to be a sanctuary. But how do we as people born thousands of years later find sanctuary in God? Well, there's one way, and one way only, through Jesus Christ, who died for us and nailed the world's sins to the cross so that we could have salvation. But we have to do a few things first before we are able to obtain this salvation. First, we must hear the word of God. We can't believe in him if we don't know who he is after all, so therefore, we have to hear. Second, we have to believe after we hear the word, we have to have faith that it's the truth. Third, we must repent. We must make a change in our lives so that we can be with God. Fourth, we must confess. Next, we must confess our sins and believe Jesus is the Son of God and that he did die for us on the cross. This is an important step because otherwise, we cannot move forward into step five, which is being baptized into Christ. This is the most important part of the process of becoming a Christian. Otherwise, you're really not a follower of Christ, and you're still in your sins. And finally, sixth, we must be faithful. We must continue to follow Christ throughout all the days of our life, so we may be saved and be able to go with him into paradise. So if you feel the need to come into Christ today, please do so as we stand and as we sing.
If there is any among us that needs to partake of the Lord's Supper, that's been prepared in room 505, and you may exit the auditorium now through these double doors, and the gentlemen are there to serve you. Also, if you would be passing in your attendance cards to the inside aisles, our young men are coming now to collect those as we're about to sing our closing song. I have a home revered for the saints of my just door in the glory land. And I long to leave my Savior's side, just door in the glory land. Just door in the glory land. you've done. We've come to the close of our service this evening, but uh, shortly after we will be having some rehearsals uh, for LTC this weekend. If you'd like to see some more of these young men, we have some more uh, services that will be with them, as well as some of the puppets and dramas and things like that that will occur this weekend at the Anatole. Uh, you can see Rick's for some more information about all that. If you would, at this time, bow with me as we close our services. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you now, humbly bow before your throne. Lord, we know that you are the only way, the one that is true, the God of all, the God of, lo of love and the God of faithfulness, and your word will never depart. Father, we ask that as we depart from these services, that we go out with a full heart and a full assurance knowing that you will provide for us, that you Hold us in your hand. You are the great physician. You are the one and only one that will guide us for eternity. Father, you ask very little compared to what you've asked of your son. Father, we ask that you be with all those that are hurting. You be with those that are healing. Father, we ask that you be with the hearts that need softening, that they soften up and open to your word and understand that your light is the only light for eternity. Father, help us each day to go and grow closer to you. Father, thank you so much for all that you've given to us, for the luxuries that we have here. And Father, we pray for those who do not have quite as much as we do. Father, we know that you are all in all. And through eternity we will have with you that we'll be able to rejoice in heaven with you for all eternity. Father, thank you so much for all that you've done and for your son, and it's his most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Go and tell it, go, go and tell about it, go.